HUT 194 NAEP Preparation Week 15 Test Instruments. The objective of this assignment will help the HVAC learner to understand the importance to identify the ways to use HVAC refrigeration test equipment and instruments, describe the different styles and types of HVAC test instruments, discuss the purpose of HVAC test instruments, explain proper use of HVAC refrigeration test instrument, discuss the importance of maintaining in good order of HVAC refrigeration test instruments, and describe the principles operating of HVAC test instruments. A HVAC technician must develop the skills in, of interpreting electrical diagrams to service and install HVAC refrigeration equipment. Without this skill, the technician will not be competent in truly understanding how the equipment operates and how to repair a problem. The majority of the technical problems a technician will come across daily will be electrical issues. Therefore, gaining the skills of reading and interpreting electrical issues is very important to the progress of a journeyman technician. Therefore, using the proper test instruments is critical. And without using and understanding how to use these t test instruments, a technician would basically be guessing at a problem and assuming uh, a certain issue will be what they think it is. Uh, however, it can be something very different. So using critical thinking skills and how to use the proper uh, test equipment will help the technician to be uh, better competent and to speed up the process of locating uh, service issues. So the vocabulary for this week will be voltmeter, ampermeter, ohmmeter, gas detection meter, flu and fuel analyzer, microamp meter, gauge manifold set, and digital thermometer. There's many different types of electrical meters we find in the field. Uh, some of the things would be a multi-tester, which is a type of meter that uh, will have multiple purposes, which can read voltage, amperage, and resistance. And they will have a, a scale or a range that it can read from a very high resistance to very low resistance or voltage or current, of course. However, uh, there's times when you need to be more accurate and they will have specialized type uh, uh, electrical meters to be able to uh, attain these type of readings. However, you may find voltmeters, ampmeters, and ohmmeters that is separate but it can be combined in a multi-tester. Of course, when we're checking uh, electrical systems, such as that electrical board that you find on a furnace, uh, we need to be able to check the voltage or the amperage um, or the resistance of certain components to, uh, to find out if the system is working correctly. When you're dealing with heating systems, we use specialized heating uh, equipment that is designed to uh, analyze uh, the operation of the burners. So, for example, a gas furnace will use a fuel analyzer to uh, record the flue gases to determine the percentage of carbon dioxide or monoxides or noxides, uh, nitrogen oxides, to uh, determine how efficient the burner is operating. But also, over and above that, I can tell you how much uh, excess air the burner is actually consuming, uh, the, the discharge temperature of the flue gases uh, to, to see if it's in the range where it should be or higher or below that it should be. But this is tools that we will use to help uh, to troubleshoot and to uh, actually ex to adjust the system to the optimal uh, condition of percentages of efficiency. So there's like uh, microamp meters which we use to check the current flow and DC current uh, through the flame refrication system to determine if it's in range to keep from having service issues of locking out the burners. Of course we use millivolt meters to check older type systems where we use it to read DC voltage for thermocouples uh, to see if the thermocouple producing the, um, the correct amount of DC voltage. 
These are gauges that we use in the refrigeration air conditioning field. And these gauges are basically um, designed to read pressure, but over and above that, the gauge in PSI is also calibrated to read the, um, the specific uh, temperature of the, uh, the gases based on the type of gas used or the refrigerant you're using and its uh, a corresponding pressure to go along with that temperature. And this is something we will use uh, anytime you need to uh, understand what the how the system is operating and the refrigerant is op uh, flowing through the air conditioning or refrigeration system. So there is also, like I said, airflow type of metering devices or uh, airflow testing equipment. And the picture on the left is a uh, incline manometer. This manometer reads pressure, very low pressure, which is measured and calibrated in inches of water column. And this incline uh, manometer has a, a special fluid inside of it, and it is filled to a certain point. And as the air pressure uh, is uh, in the system, it causes it to rise to a certain level in that incline to read the pressure the system is uh, producing. On the right is basically a uh, pressure switch, and many pressure switches are calibrated to a certain uh, static pressure, and we would need a manometer to be able to read the pressure in the system to find out if the pressure switch is working correctly. So that's another device we can use meters for a test instrument uh, to, to find out if it's working correctly. Also the, for reading um, airflow is what we call a anometer. Anometer is a device which is used to read the velocity of air pressure. There's many different types of anometers. It's a hot wire type of anometer, which is a probe that has uh, current going through it. And because of the air movement across the, uh, the wire, we calls the resistance to change. And of course, the meter will read, the, the, is calibrated to read the airflow based on that resistance. It's a very accurate uh, tool, but there's many other types of um, anometers. There's a vane type where it has like a little fan blade that was spin based on the velocity of the air moving across it. And of course, that has to be directly in the airflow uh, uh, 90 degrees perpendicular to the airflow. And if not, uh, it will throw off the, the true reading. So accuracy is, is taken uh, and must be taken in that type of anometer. Of course, there's refrigeration test equipment. In this picture, you see gauges. We see a, uh, a refrigerant cylinder, which is calibrated to read the uh, amount of refrigerant in pounds, but it also have a pressure gauge on it too, so you can uh, uh, fine tune the pressure based on uh, its temperature of the refrigerant. But on the uh, top right-hand side is the uh, vacuum gauge. And it is basically is measuring uh, very, very small um, vacuums, in, or we could say deep vacuums, and is measured in microns. And that scale will um, move over to, do, to an analog type scale, will tell you basically what the uh, vacuum in the system is. And we measure vacuums in inches of mercury, inches of mercury. So we try to pull the system down to very deep vacuums. However, a micron gauge will take that very last inch uh, at 29 inches and it will uh, read that in microns, which is 25,400 microns in one inch. So we try to pull the system down to about 500 microns, which is a very deep vacuum. Of course, we see gauges too, and these gauges are used to calibrate to um, read the pressure in the system. And of course, the the blue gauge on the um, left side in the middle of the picture, the photo, is um, a compound gauge which will read both pressure and vacuums. So to summarize different type of tools we use, there's many, many, many different types of test equipment we need. But the m most important thing is using the right tool for the right job and using high quality tools and maintaining your tools. By maintaining your tools, the this test equipment could last for multiple years, 
And matter of fact, you could last a lifetime, or at least your career time, to um, to take you through many of these different uh, issues you run through if it's taken care of and maintained. So electrical meters are used to help troubleshoot electrical circuits. Uh, using the right tool for the right job will help avoid accidents and will extend the life of the tools. Keeping tools in good working order will allow the technician to receive accurate information from their test equipment. And if not, the tools need to be sent out to be recalibrated. All power tools must be connected to a GFI, um, basically a ground fault circuit interrupter to protect yourself because small currents will basically will um, can flow through and can cause shock. Any damaged power tools or electrical tools or test equipment need uh, to be repaired or replaced if that occur. Only use ground faulted tools or double insulated tools for your safety.